<laughs> okay. I'd like to introduce Lorraine from Scotland, who has multiple sclerosis. Welcome, Lorraine. Hi. Could you tell us when you first started to notice your MS symptoms? Um, almost exactly to the day. The end of February 2000. All right. Um, I developed the most horrendous pain in my head. Not a headache but my very scalp was sore. Mm -hmm. um, went to my GP, was immediately referred on to a medical consultant, which I think at first they thought it was like a brain tumour or a, a, ble a bleed of some sort. Right. That sort of intense pain. Yeah. Um, within a couple of weeks, I get sent to the hospital for the appointment. And the doctor kept me in immediately right. and sent me for an MRI the next day. I get sent home for my jammies and told to be back in for tea time, which was really, <laughs> really, really scary. Yeah. Um, the following day, I did an MRI. And within a couple of days, um, I had my diagnosis. And how did that impact on you? Um, I remember standing. Um, I had went to the consultant with two of my friends, um, and apart from them laughing at me when the consultant said I had a normal brain, because my friends were convinced that that wasn't possible, <laughs> um, that we came outside of this other uh, the garden table, and the three of us looked to each other and they just started howling the tears. All these people are walking around us, going on with their normal life. Um, and the three of us were just standing and breaking our hearts. It was dreadful. Mm. Um, as an ex-nurse, um, I was convinced that my life was over. Mm -hmm. Having worked with people with the very worst stages of, uh, of MS, yeah. um, I didn't realise that people could live with it. Mm. I thought that people became very, very ill. Mm. So, what other symptoms did you notice before you started LDN? Sorry? What other symptoms did you notice before you started LDN? Um, after the headache, it went, the headache dissipated. Um, I have I had a really bad weakness all down my left side. Um, I can actually physically draw a line. I can still do it. I can physically draw a line from the tip of my head all the way down my body, I can actually feel this, this, it's really strange. It's like one half of my body's there and one half hasn't. That's exactly what I had. Is it? That's yeah, really exactly. unusual because most people seem to be kind of go around the middle and stuff. No, mine was down the middle and half my tongue, um, mm -hmm. yes. the gums in my mouth, you know, half my nose, absolutely half of everything. Yes. It's really mm. strange. Mm. You're you're the first person that I've also spoken to. <laughs> there that, you go. So. <laughs> I do know what you mean. Yes, uh, and yes. it's very strange. It makes walking quite difficult sometimes. Mm. <laughs> so what what else were you experiencing? Um, horrendous fatigue. Mm -hmm. Absolutely horrendous fatigue. I went through um, all the different medications that they provide. Mm -hmm. um, a man I can't remember what the next one was. Um, eventually, I was taking Provigil, yeah. um, which is designed for narcolepsy, mm -hmm. um, which is horrendously expensive. It's something like 60 quid a box. Is it really? Um, and I was taking two of these a day. Yeah. Not boxes, tablets. Yes. Um, well, I also took them, and um, the first night of taking just one tablet I didn't sleep at mm -hmm. all uh, it took about a week to settle down so I could sleep but it gave me wow energy during the day it was yeah. amazing kept me awake but then after about a couple of months it wore off so I then took two mm -hmm. which kept me awake quite nicely and then after a couple of months it, it had no effect on me anymore mm. what I found was it had a uh, a cumulative effect almost. Um, I would be fine. I could take them for four or five days straight, no problem. 
and get to sleep at night and stuff. But eventually, it kept me awake for 24 hours. Right. Um, so I had to be really careful when I was taking them. Mm-hmm. Um, I just if, if I, I had medication to judge with because I needed it just to get through the most basic of days. Yeah. Because it's unbelievable how much the MS saps your energy. Mm. It just leaves you like a dish rag. Yeah. Um, how about your bladder? Did did it affect that? Um, I'm not too bad, fortunately. Mm-hmm. fortunately. What about cognitive problems? Um, horrendous co- cognitive problems. I've always been very proud of my, voc- my, 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 my excuse me, very proud of my vocabulary. Mm-hmm. Um, no, the, the, the shaft is cookie in the box, or shaft is nice in the box even, but I've got a very good vocabulary, um, and it would be a standing joke with my friends. They could tell by about 8 o'clock at night, and just, like, if I was on the telephone or something, I would stop being able to speak. Mm. I couldn't get the words to come from mm-hmm. my head into my mouth. I would end up speaking gobbledygook, getting my <laughs> words all mixed up. It's so funny. I, I was exactly the same. <laughs> that as well. That's really unusual because it doesn't. I mean, just because of the way MS is, it mm. everybody's so different. It'd be good to see where our lesions were, how how similar mm-hmm. they are. Spine are on my back, on my spine. I I didn't actually. I've only had I've had uh, two MRIs, but it was both mm. times on my brain. I haven't mm. actually had my my spinal column. All right. Okay. Um, so I and don't know. No way out. Well, this is the plaques are on my spine. Mhm. So how did you hear about LDN? Um, one of my neighbours, um, a guy called Tommy, who lives across the road from me, mm-hmm. um, has had MS for oh, 20 years plus. Um, man's now in his 70s. He does use a wheelchair now. Um, but he's convinced that MS has kept him as fit and healthy as he is today. He, he ha- his symptoms haven't really changed in the last, I think it's sort of 12 or 14 years now, 10 years, oh. whatever it is, he's mm. been taking the MS, um, LDN. He was one of the first people to take it um, through the doctor down in Wales. Yes. He had, uh, Dr Lawrence, he had um, read an article about it somewhere years and years and years ago, right at the very, very beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and had started on it then. It's now, I think, a personal friend of Dr. Lawrence's. It's been going that long. Mm-hmm. Um, and he kept on at me about it. Just try it. Just try it. It'll no do you any harm. The worst it'll do is no help you. Mm-hmm. It's, got to be, it's got to be worth trying. And I had a horrible problem trying to get it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did eventually manage to persuade my GP into, uh, into prescribing it. Um, I was quite fortunate. I used the same GP practice as Tommy. Um, <laughs> and they had already set a precedence yeah. by prescribing it for him, so it made it very difficult for them to not prescribe it for me. But eventually I did get it. And within three days, I felt better. Mm-hmm. Um with my cognitive easement. That was the first thing it came back. And that in itself is worth its weight in gold. Yes. Um but I've now I mean I've been on the LDN now for about five years. Mhm. Um for the first 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 year I just kept thinking this isn't gonna keep going, something's gonna happen, this is gonna get go back as bad as it was and um the fatigue I, I used to volunteer two days a week. And the Citizens Advice Bureau, mm-hmm. um, and that took up all of my energy mm-hmm. for the week. I had to relax the day before, do do my day, relax a day, do a day, and then relax. That was virtually my whole week tied up, um, just by doing two days voluntary work. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm now back at work full time. Wow. Did you notice any side effects when you first started? None at all. Mm-hmm. None at all. So how um, old were you when you first had MS? I was... It was <laughs> I got my... Um, just by doing two days voluntary work. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm now back at work full time. Wow. 
Did you notice any side effects when you first started? None at all. Mm -hmm. None at all. So um, how old were you when you first had MS? I was... It was <laughs> I got my official diagnosis on the 28th of May 2000. So I was 35. Mm -hmm. It was 11 years ago. Wow. Um, so and I really lost five or six years. Mm. Um, having always had a career, I lost my job because I couldn't do it. Um, I worked with adults with learning disabilities um, and I couldn't physically do the job. Um, and I just felt as though I had lost my whole identity. Hello. Hi. Yep. Sorry, I thought I'd lost you. <laughs> no, it was a good I'm sorry, I've forgotten the the, the question. Mhm. Mm so it's okay; it will be edited anyway. Um, <laughs> so, how would you compare your quality of life now to before you started LDN? Absolutely chalk and cheese. Um, I still have MS. It's, mm -hmm. it's not a medical cure, but my quality of life has improved one hundred percent. I feel as though I'm back being myself again. I'm human again. I haven't lost all my identity, etc. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, I'm back working full time. Don't get me wrong, I come home from work at night, I'm exhausted. Yeah. But who isn't when they come home from a hard day's work? Mm. Well, that's such a good story. What would you say to other people who are contemplating trying LDM but might be a little bit scared? The same as Tommy told me, try it. It might help you. It's never going to harm you. It's a tiny dose. It's three milligrams. Um, the original um, sort of therapeutic use of it was 50 milligrams three times a day minimum. Mm -hmm. So now I mean, you're taking three milligrams a night. It's worth trying. It's got to be worth trying. You've got nothing to lose. Well, thank you very much, Lorraine, for sharing your story with us. It's very inspirational. Thank you very much, yourself. So there, that's that finished. That wasn't.